Hello and welcome, this is Alistair Christie, bringing you another training movie. This one is not about programming as such, but a tool that will probably be of great benefit to you, virtualization. Virtualization is becoming increasingly popular amongst developers. I can tell this just by watching the news groups. In this guide, we're going to concern ourselves only with VMware, but there are a number of other virtualization products available. So, what is virtualization? You can think of it as being a software abstraction of hardware that you can then install an operating system and software onto. The software running on these virtual machines has no idea that it's running on an emulated computer. Think of yourself with reference to the film The Matrix. The virtual computer has a virtual BIOS, virtual hard disk, file system, virtual CPU, RAM, virtual... well, you get the idea. Virtualization is not new. It's been around since the 1960s, but seems to be getting more attention of late. There are lots of benefits to developers. One area, for example, is in testing. Using a single computer, you can test your application on multiple operating systems. If your application crashes in some terrible way, taking the operating system with it, your computer hasn't crashed, only a virtual machine, which you can restart into some previously saved state in no time. Alternatively, if you're developing a multi-tier solution, rather than requiring separate computers for testing each layer, you can instead install each tier onto a different virtual computer. Each virtual computer will have its own IP and can communicate with each other as if they were separate physical machines. This not only has obvious cost benefits, but can also be great in terms of convenience and physical space requirements. You just don't need as many computers lying around. There are many, many more benefits, which are listed at great length on the VMware website, which you can read in your own time. Today, we are going to create a virtual machine in VMware, then install FreeDOS as the operating system, and then install Turbo Pascal 5.5. A bit of a blast from the past. So, what are the prerequisites? You will need to download and install VMware Server from VMware.com, download Turbo Pascal 5.5 from the museum at codegear.com, and download a FreeDOS ISO from FreeDOS.org. I downloaded the bare minimum, the FreeDOS base CD, which comes in at a whopping 8 megabytes. Now, after all that, let's actually get started. Okay, let's start by starting up the VMware server. And we'll create a new machine. And call it FreeDOS. And we don't need networking. And we'll allocate the absolute minimum of 100 megabytes of um, capacity for the disk. And for what we're doing, uh, that will seem absolutely excessive. Uh, memory, we can take that down to 4 megabytes. Who would ever need more than 4 megabytes? Okay, and what we'll do is for the CD-ROM drive, we'll use an ISO image and we'll grab the uh, FreeDOS base CD image uh, which I downloaded from the FreeDOS website. Okay, let's press the power button and see what happens. Oops, I only need to press it once. So we're now booting FreeDOS from the CD, and we'll uh, install it. The first thing we need to do is partition the hard disk. And we'll make it a FAT32 partition. And F3 to quit. And we'll write that now. And restart. Now while it's doing that, let's press F2, which will take us into the BIOS. Um, and I'll make 
the CD-ROM boot first, otherwise it will try booting from the hard drive, which doesn't have an operating system installed on it as yet. Okay, so now that we've uh, prepared our hard disk, we can actually uh, install. Oh, so we're just going to format it, and then we can install the um, free DOS. And as you can see, uh, most of the default settings are fine for our purposes. In fact, we don't need to even install quite so much. Just while that's installing, I will mention a little bit about FreeDOS. In fact, I'll just read the blurb off their website. FreeDOS is a free DOS-compatible operating system for IBM PC-compatible systems. FreeDOS is made up of many different separate programs that act as packages to the overall FreeDOS project. These days, there are three main uses of FreeDOS. To run classic games like Doom, MAME, etc. To run business software that only supports DOS. To support an embedded DOS system such as a computerized cache register or TIL. You can run FreeDOS on pretty much anything. While FreeDOS can run on a dedicated PC, it is now most often run inside a PC emulator. You can find PC emulators on all computer platforms, Windows, Mac, Linux. If you are new to DOS, we recommend you use an emulator to install and boot FreeDOS. And what do you know, that's just what we're doing. Okay. And I will want to unmount that and we'll reboot. And we have a command prompt. Okay, now I am going to mount another ISO image. This time it's Turbo Pascal 5.5. What I did was I've, I've cheated somewhat. I uh, have created an ISO image based on the uh, files on the two floppy disks and merged them together. Okay, and we shall install. Now this actually fails, but we can get around it fairly easily. Um, it fails to execute that, so what we can actually do and do that again. Okay, and voila, or voila, or whatever. Um, uh, my machine is not exactly the fastest, um, so the emulation has, um, needs to work quite hard. And Control F9 runs, and there we go. I have to say that this was somewhat of a nostalgia trip for me as I learned to program on Turbo Pascal 5.5 over 15 years ago. This obviously does not include the painful typing in of machine code from PC Magazine into Debug to make those little COM programs that did exciting things like turn on and off the caps lock light. This example of using a virtual machine was rather limited, mostly due to time constraints, but the principles obviously scale to bigger operating systems. The computer I used to record this is somewhat less than beastie, and doing the Camtasia recording simultaneously made things rather sluggish. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope this will be a springboard for you into the world of hardware virtualization.